Hey, this is George Lynch, a.k.a. Mr. Scary, although I'm not really that scary anymore. But you're watching Jay Palmer and Lynch Licks. is going on wonderful intro from mr lynch himself to this um first episode actually it's the second episode technically of lynch Lick special edition yeah if you haven't seen the first episode already i shall leave a link somewhere up here because i had a conversation with um george and hayes from banishment actually it's lynch it's lynch and hayes there are only one name everyone has to have just a single name i'm actually jp in this series of videos, I'm just JP. <laughs> Honorary manager, um, roadie, and um, three left footed um, choreographer. You'll see when you watch the um, conversation that we had. <laughs> Anyways, today I am going to be teaching you that wonderful intro solo that George does on this track, which is called Lost Horizons. I love this solo, very very bluesy, as soon as I heard it I kind of knew what George was doing because it's a technique which I kind of use in my own playing and I really really love playing like this so it's going to be a real real pleasure showing you guys. And I also have the tab, the link is in the description box below so go ahead and download that if you would like that. I'm such a nice guy, I even do the tab for you. <laughs> Anyways. In addition to that, I'm going to be giving you a full rig rundown of all of the gear that I use to get the sound um, which you're hearing on my version of this. Um, I know you're going to be fascinated by this because I'm going to show you the amp, the pedals, the whole chain that I use, the impulse responses, the whole lot. It is pretty damn cool and you will enjoy it. Yeah! And then I'm going to be talking to Hayes and George as well about that intro solo. Super, super, super cool. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification because the next lesson that I do is going to be on the rhythm guitars. And this is going to be totally, totally fascinating because the rhythm guitars are actually layered up. There are these really subtle layers which happen within the track, uh, within the uh, verse and the chorus, which are just absolutely mind-blowing. They add these little hints of um, sounds and textures. It's just wonderful how it actually builds up to that whole vibe that you hear um, on the song. And I also have a very, very cool video which Hayes sent me um, explaining how he did the parts which he overlaid onto George's guitars. So you're gonna wanna watch that. It is absolutely fascinating to watch. It's phenomenal. All right, you guys, I'm gonna teach this to you. So let's get going with that and then I'll show you the rig rundown, speak to George, etc. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, yeah. Now this feels kind of familiar. <laughs> We're back. I'm gonna teach you some guitar today. So that fantastic bluesy intro solo which George did, um, I'm gonna walk you through it. Now you're probably wondering why I'm using my Telecaster and why I used it on the video. Well, I was talking to Hayes about the gear that was used on um, the recording. And um, he told me that George used the blue Telecaster he has for most of the solos. And um, when I was listening to it, I could hear that kind of twangy sound. So um, I figured probably use the Telecaster bridge pickup. Um, I am plugged into my purple number 39 head on the high gain channel and I've got a, uh, a clone of a clon. Clone of a clon. <laughs> it's a pedal which I call the replicant, <laughs> which is actually boosting the front, but it's also EQing it a little bit as well and um, creating a really, really, really super cool vibe, which is why you can hear the hiss as well. 
Now I've switched off the uh, phaser pedal which I used as well but I'm going to walk you through my whole kind of setup um, in a little bit after I teach you this solo. Alrighty, so we're going to start off with uh, this uh, very very cool bluesy lick which goes like this. That is so cool. As soon as I heard it, I kind of knew what George was doing because I play around with this type of lick quite often. So I'm going to start off on the open high E string. I'm going to play that. I down pick it. Then I'm going to um, up pick the open B string. Now I don't mind if there's a little bit of crossover between the strings. It kind of adds to that whole bluesy kind of ambience there. All right. After I do that, what I'm going to do is play the third fret of the B string and then pull off to the open B string. That's my opening move. The two open strings, the E and the B. And then the third fret of the B pulling off to the open B. So when I play that together. Beautiful lick, love that. <laughs> Alrighty, we're gonna go up to the G string at the second fret. Gonna pick the note and do a full step bend up. And I'm just going to hold it up there and it's held for quite a while, longer than you expect um, when you listen to the solo. Now if it's a little bit dirty, if there's some crossover of notes and stuff, it's absolutely fine because it's a very bluesy solo. So when I add that in, we get that. Alrighty, now I'm going to come back to the B string. I'm going to pick the open B, um, hammer onto the third fret and then pull off uh, to the open B. Then I'll come back to the second fret of the G string again. I'm going to pick it and do a bend up and down, a full step bend up and down. All right, after that, I'm going to um, bend it again up and down and then um, come to the open um, G string and then go to the second fret of the D string. So that's how we're going to begin. Now I know some of you are going to be thinking this kind of sounds like a song by a band called Rat. Somebody else picked up on that recently as well. <laughs> so did I as soon as I heard it. It was like, that sounds really cool. Anyways, let's, uh, let's carry on. So now I'm going to go up to the uh, open E string, play the uh, open E string, uh, the low E string, and then the third fret of the uh, low E string. And then I'll come back to the D string and play the zero and the uh, two. So I'm going to mute the uh, low E string a little bit. Now, um, one of the reasons that I'm using the uh, clon clone in the signal chain is because it tightens up the low end. Um, when I um, don't use it, especially with a Marshall type amp, the uh, low end gets pretty flubby but this tightens it up nicely. So I'm going to play those four notes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the E string, open uh, E string, um, play it muted uh, just one more time. So it'll just be a bump at the end there. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to come back to the G string at the second fret and do that same bend up and down. Come back to the uh, open G string and then go to the second fret of the D. <laughs> So when I add that together, it's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> Alrighty, then I'm going to um, play on the uh, low E string again, but the rhythm is going to change a little bit this time. I'm going to do this. Okay, so what I did there was um, I picked the uh, low E string, uh, palm muted, and then I'm going to pick it twice again at twice the speed so uh, the first note is an eighth the second note is two sixteenths so just like that and then I'll come to the third fret of the E string and then I'll come down to the D string and I'm gonna pick the open D string and hammer on to the second fret and after this I'm gonna come up to the uh, the 14th fret of the the D string so I'll just recap what I've done so far. So this is what I've played. Which 
which is super cool. And quicker it sounds like this. <laughs> which is wicked cool. <laughs> Alrighty, now, um, like I said, I'm gonna come up to the 14th fret of the D string and I'm gonna pick the note and do a full step bend up and just hold it there. And from here, I'm gonna play this really cool lick um, where I'm gonna do a bend on the 14th fret of the uh, G string here. Then I'm gonna play the 15, 12 on the B string and then come back to the 14th fret of the uh, G string. But I'm not gonna do a bend. I'm basically just gonna come back to the 14th. So like this. And it's a super, super, super cool lick there. So like I said, bend on the 14th fret of the G string. 15, 12 on the uh, B string. And then um, coming back to the 14 on the G. And I do that twice. Now I use strictly alternate picking for this and that's what seems to work best. Now I did do a playthrough at the beginning of this week but I was in a bit of a rush and um, I was struggling with this lick. I watched the video back later and it was like, damn it, I'm doing two down picks. <laughs> I was being and I was struggling with it. So um, uh, I'll show you that. Here's the clip of it. Don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. <laughs> the timing goes off a little bit. But with alternate picking, it seems to work really, really well. Okay, so now I'm gonna do that one more time. But this time, at the end, I'm not gonna to come to the 14 on the G string. I'm gonna slide down to the 11 on the B. So like this. Alrighty, from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the 11 and 12 on the uh, B string, and then the open E string. I'm gonna let it ring as well. So I'm gonna do it three times. So it's gonna be 11, 12, and I think I do a hammer on first of all. And then I do um, the uh, open E string. So like I said, I do that three times, and then I'm gonna come back um, to the 14th fret of the G string here. And I'm gonna do um, a bend up and down, and then I'm gonna do a second bend up and down, pull off to the 12th fret of the G string, and then come to the 14th on the D string. So like this. Alrighty, so when I add all of that together, we get this. which is the second part of the, the solo. Alrighty, now what I'm gonna do is this. Which is exactly the same as I've shown you previously, which was in the uh, first part of the solo. So, um, picking the open E string, picking it three times muted, third fret of the E string, D string, uh, zero, hammering onto two, then the second fret of the G string, bend up and down, open G string, and then the second fret of the D. Alrighty, after this, we get to the end of the solo, where I'm gonna do this. So what I'm doing there is I'm sliding with my third finger this time, from the second fret to the fourth fret of the G string, and then I'm playing the third fret of the B. Then what I'll do is I'll pick up the 4th fret of the G, slide to the 6th fret, and then play the 5th fret of the B. And then I'm going to move my fingers over to the 9th uh, fret of the G string, and the 8th fret of the B string, pick it and just do one bend up and down. And that's the end of the solo there. So when I tag it all together, we get this. I'll do it slowly.
That's the whole of the solo. I'm going to show you at speed in the crack in just a second, but first of all, I'm going to show you the gear that I used. Obviously, I used my Telecaster, I'm on the bridge pickup, and um, that's it. Yeah, the bridge pickup of my Telecaster. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Full volume. Um, let me show you the amp and the pedals that I used for this sound. Alrighty, let's talk gear. So, like I said, the guitar that I used was this, my Telecaster. I have had this forever. This was basically the first guitar I ever owned. Well, the body is anyway. Uh, the neck is different. I've changed the neck on this a few times. I sold the Telecaster neck many years ago because, you know, 21 frets and it's a Telecaster neck. <laughs> I wanted a 22 fret and I didn't want it to look Telecaster. I'm going to change the neck out on this again at some point because I want a um, different headstock on it but you shall see that in the future. Anyways, it is loaded with uh, Iron Gear pickups. I can't remember which pickups uh, they are in here, but they're by Iron Gear. The uh, bridge pickup is pretty cool because it has a push-pull on it and it basically um, halves the, uh, the output when I pull it up so I can have a very vintage tone or um, I can push it down and it gives me a hotter um, bridge pickup tone, which is awesome. I think it does it to the neck pickup as well. I can't remember. Um, precisely but maybe it does um, the uh, control plate there is the opposite way around I prefer it like this I prefer having the uh, select switch out here so that I can get to the volume knob really easily when I'm playing and stuff so uh, yeah that's why I used all the body maple neck maple fretboard um, this is actually covered in real um, stingray skin used to be an old pair of boots I used to have to wear um, and I didn't want to throw away the skin so I repurposed it for the guitar same with the snake skin here, all pair of boots. <laughs> all right, over to the amp and the pedals that I used. Um, went from my guitar into this pedal, which is called the Replicant. Now, this is a kit which I built by a company called Jed's Peds. You should check them out if you want to build some um, effects pedals. Fantastic um, company, you basically kind of buy the whole kit and you download the instructions, put it together, etc. etc. This is basically a uh, Clone of a clone. Clone of a clone. Clone of a clone. Clone of a clone. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> Why did I use uh, the clone pedal? Well, basically, um, I've seen some of the pictures from the recording sessions, and George was using a clone pedal during the recording sessions. Kind of figured that he probably put this on the lead sound. Now, he was using an original clone, which is super expensive, and uh, this one's not. This one was like about 40 bucks or something like that. And it's a super, super cool pedal. Um, really nice sound. It, it did something really fascinating to the uh, the guitar sound, which was to really fatten it up. It thickened it up, added a little bit of gain. Not too much. This isn't a high gain kind of boost pedal or anything like that. Now, I did contemplate using um, either my um, Tube Screamer, which I love, or uh, my recent acquisition, which is a Maxon um, OD808. I love this pedal. This pedal is freaking awesome. Um, I will bring you a video of this pedal really, really soon. But you know, in the meantime, this was this was the guy. The clone was the guy because it was in the pictures, and I knew George was using it. And I haven't used it on a, a video or a track. And totally cool pedal. Very, very, very dynamic. Really brought out all the nuances of my playing. Alrighty, from there I went into my custom Phase 90 Plus pedal. I called it Phase 90 Plus. That's my name. <laughs> This is another kit uh, which I built. It's by a company called Music Ding. This is about 40 bucks as well. Uh, has the addition of the depth knob on it, so I could dial in, in you know, just the right amount of depth and stuff. I have a switch on it which uh, switches it from script uh, to block to psych. Yeah, so 
essentially it's based on the MXR Phase 90. Um, the script basically has that old school Van Halen type of vibe going on. The block is a little bit more kind of like precise, I'd say. The, um, uh, the script is definitely warmer sounding and fuller sounding. Now the psych mode, basically it just goes a little bit crazy and it's very, very, very super cool. Um, again, I will bring you a uh, video of this pedal at some point. I love the psych mode. It is kind of like mind-blown modulation type of thing. So uh, uh, the uh, clone pedal basically went into here. Now this is really important. When you actually chain up pedals, the order makes a difference to the sound. Now I've played around with the placement of pedals, boost pedal into a phase or a phase pedal into a boost. I like the boost pedal going into the phase because it makes the phase sound a little bit more prominent. And uh, at the beginning of the track, of the uh, original track um, Lost Horizons, you can actually hear the modulation because George kind of turns up the guitar volume they left it on the track which was genius and I love it and I did the same on mine. Had that modulation thing going on. Now um, I did contemplate whether George used a Univibe type of pedal at the beginning. I don't know. I, I'm gonna ask him and uh, I shall let you know when I know. But this sounded awesome on it, sounded like the track, so I used it. Alrighty, then I went into my wonderful purple number 39 head. Now, if you guys haven't seen the videos of the purple number 39, I shall link them up here because I built this. This was basically based on uh, uh, Jet City JCA22 head. Uh, heavily modified in um, collaboration with my very good friend Bryce Boyd at Epic Amplification. We built this amp to basically uh, be um, a take on the SIR number 39 amp, which George used to use back in the day, in the docking days and stuff, and which also kind of slash used, uh, etc. You know, lots and lots of people use them. Um, in fact, channel one is SIR number 34 and number 36. Um, channel two is uh, SIR number 39. Also have a um, control on it, which turns it into the Aspen Pintman Purple Plexi. Now, I basically had it most of the way over to the Purple Plexi side because it's a little bit more of a thicker tone, fuller, a little bit less gain, but that's where I had the boost pedal going into it anyways. Uh, I will show you a close-up of the EQ as well so that you can see my exact settings. Um, now, the kit to actually build this is available from Epic Amplification and I shall leave a link in the description box below. So if you are inclined to uh, build a Purple Number 39 head, it is possible to do, so i hit Bryce up with that. This sounds fantastic, it's my absolute favorite amp. It's just such a beast of an amplifier. All right, from there, I went into my Boss Waza um, Tube Amp Expander. Love this load box, absolutely amazing piece of kit. Um, I had the EQ and the uh, boost activated. I kind of just like how it sounds. Uh, it, has it all built into here. Um, I always leave the resonance Z on high mid and also the presence Z on high mid as well. That's where I just like the sound of it. And then that went into a channel on my DAW, which is Logic. Now the impulse responses that I used for uh, the sound are the own hammer lynchback uh, impulse responses. Really cool impulse responses. Love the sound of them. Um, have been using them for a few years now. and. Just love the response, the thickness of sound. It's got that EQ curve, which I like, very mid-heavy. Um, and then I just used a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay. I did contemplate using my uh, Caitlin Bread um, Bell Epoch in the loop of the amp, and I did try that, but it wasn't recording as well as I had. I would have liked it to. So basically, I, I reverted to a plugin for the delay, and the uh, delay plugin that I used was Echo Boy by Sound Toys. One of my favorite plugins, absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's very little I do to it when I load it up. I basically just load it up, um, select the default classic Echoplex setting, put the mix knob on 100, and then just dial it in to, to test. That's it. I don't actually screw with any of the rest of the controls. Just works, sounds fantastic. And then there was a touch of reverb on there as well. One of my favorite reverbs, the um, Softube ZAR 1R reverb. I've been using it for years. Now, I'll show you the settings on screen so that you guys can um, 
uh, copy them if you want to and try them out and see what it sounds like. I like a dark reverb because then it sits slightly further back in the mix. It doesn't interfere with the, uh, the punch of the guitar sound. Um, I find that when there's a bright reverb then it basically puts the guitar slightly further back in the mix. Um, I like the guitars to be much, much more forward, so that's why I set it up like that. Now on the actual recording, George used a uh, Soldano SLO, a grey one, which was actually one of the amps which he used for Wicked Sensation. Yeah, the rhythm tracks on Wicked Sensation were recorded apparently with um, that amplifier and um, the snake skin one as well, but this was the grey one on these recordings. Um, the other amp which he used uh, mainly for the lead sounds was his Diesel Herbert. It's a lime green color, you guys might have seen it in pictures. I shall flash up a picture of that as well. So that's the gear that George used on the actual album um, and the recording. Obviously, kind of tried to get as close as possible to that sound using my gear and I think I did a pretty good job of it. Alrighty, that is everything. Now a word from George and Hayes. Yeah! We, we we had so many amps going and so many pedals, Jay. It was freaking nuts. I mean, it, it's been a while, um, so it's a little bit hard to remember. Hayes may have a better recollection yeah, of how it went down. I, um, uh, the one thing I can say, uh, it, it was actually cool because we had the uh, old Soldano, uh, the, well, one of them with the, the gray uh, wrapped Soldano. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we also used uh, George's uh, diesel, the, the green one, the green monster. Uh, Right. Just some of the stuff that we did was actually down tuned. Mm -hmm. Was it? Right. The, oh, sorry. The, yeah. the, those two amps, the um, the gray one from um, the Wicked Sensation era, is that correct? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And the, mm -hmm. the green one, um, I've heard that. I've heard that live actually. I heard you play that in not. Yeah. Yet. So. so <laughs> oh, shit. Um, yeah. That the 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 uh, the uh, Herbert. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And uh, I also brought in some vintage gear. I, I brought in some uh, vintage compressors and stuff just to kind of, uh, you know, give it that flavor. But the crazy thing is, on, and I'll be honest, I mean, it was, it was awesome that Lynch was open enough to let me come in. We never worked together. He didn't know if I knew what I was doing, right? And uh, he was really receptive because I would, I would say things like, hey, you know, can, can you play that differently? Because there's going to be a keyboard on this and we need to, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm, I'm looking at more of a uh, from an orchestral pro right because i'm looking at it like okay there's guitar there's synths there's this and this and so he would you know and we would uh, not argue but we would discuss and go back and forth and it was a really healthy creative environment as opposed to hey i'm rock star you're some dude i don't know you know what i say goes so you That's know there was no ego attitude it was like two dudes you know, it, seriously, it was like being 15 in your garage at your parents' house making an album. You know what I mean? It was literally that kind of energy. And it was, it was I think, uh, it made it cool. So. so there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I am going to be back with uh, the second lesson, which is going to be on the rhythm tracks. This is going to be super, super, super fascinating um, for you guys to watch because there are lots of layers which actually go into... Uh, creating the rhythm tracks. It's not just, you know, one guitar left, one guitar right. There's all sorts of things going on in the mix. And uh, I'm going to be talking to Hayes and George about that as well at some point. Enjoy. Have a fantastic day. You can download the tab via the link in the description box below. And I shall see you again really soon with another video. Yay! And in the meantime, enjoy the playthrough again. This was so much fun to do. This was awesome. Lynch links. Yeah, who'd have thought? <laughs> Have a great day, guys. See you later. Bye!